what would be your best advice for somebody who needs to prepare for one of these uh, free consultation calls? I mean, do they even need to prep for this call or, you know, do I get more than one free call? How, how does the free call work? Yeah, with the initial consultation call, prep for it, all right? Because number one, I, I can be very busy. And so if you're going to get on my calendar, I'm always happy to give time whenever I can. As so we're literally getting 75 to 100 requests per month for consultations, which is just extraordinary. It's a great position to be in, but if you just do the math, that can be three or four a day. Uh, and so if I do an hour, that'd be three, four hours a day, every single day, where it just doesn't make sense anymore. And so when you reach out to me, make sure you let me know, or at my law firm, let me know what's going on with your case. I need to know where you're stationed, you know, your rank, your duty assignment, and just give me some background about the case. And don't BS, right? So if you're accused of a sexual assault and you're embarrassed by that, don't tell our reception staff you're accused of you know, shoplifting or nothing else. Just be, be really straightforward with it because I'm going to initially screen those calls. I'm going to really screen those calls to determine should I do a consultation? Does it make sense, right? So the first thing you need to do is just be very upfront with it. The second part of it is block off 30 minutes at least, uh, maybe to an hour, and be in a quiet location. Be in a place where you don't have distractions. I know it's difficult, but try not to have the two kids screaming. Try not to be walking, you know, walking through a Publix, picking out your chicken and your groceries while you're doing these consultation calls. And, and I say this joking around, but it happens. I've had people call me, oh, sir, I'm walking through the Publix when I can talk. No, you really can't talk because we're going to be talking about confidential and sensitive items here. And so block off a half an hour, block off your time and mentally prepare yourself. Build a timeline because I'm going to ask you to do that at the end of the call or during the call. And it doesn't have to be elaborate. You don't need to, need to use 30 PowerPoint slides. It can be a simple pen and paper or a Word document and just lay out the critical events that happened in your whatever your situation is. Because one of the first things we're going to talk about is I'll let you know that everything's protected by attorney-client confidentiality and that everything we talk about is protected, you know, stays between the two of us. I'm also going to let you know that... I want a kind of a no kidding understanding of what's going on with your case to make sure it's something I can help you out with. Uh, and if it's something I can help you out with, I wanna make sure that we're the right attorneys for you. And if we are, then we can talk about taking the relationship to the next level and whether it makes sense to retain us or not. But with every consultation, what I say is, I'm gonna make sure you leave that consultation in a better position than you started. So even if I can't take on your case, or it doesn't, it's not a good relationship between the two of us to take, not personally, but for our law firm to take on your case, I'm gonna make sure that you are in a better position than when you started. Make sure you're well prepared, block off the time, be in a location where it's private, where you can think through what's going on and you can focus and prepare by doing a brief, a timeline of the critical events in your case so that you understand them when we go forward. Um, and, then, and then after that, I'm gonna make sure, give you some next steps. And, and if it makes sense to retain us, I'll walk you through that. If it doesn't, I'll, I'll try to point you in the right direction.